Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. I am on to start my design team project for witchcraft do you do for the month of April. So for this month, I want to have a play around with the Vintage Flowers Collection Set 2 digital kit. So this kit has heaps of beautiful flowers in different colours and different sizes and it has fern leaves. It has some beautiful journal cards which I will give you a sneak peek of all different colours in those as well. And it has smaller singular flowers. It just has heaps of flowers. <laughs> now I saw the lovely Rene using it in a video, which I'll link below also, and she made some gorgeous uh, double-sided journal cards um, with flowers and that, and they were gorgeous and it inspired me heaps to have a play around with this kit. So I thought I'd just come on a couple of times this month and show you some different ways of using the kit to make some embellishments for your journals. Uh, that way I get to have a good play with it. So, so I've printed out some bits and pieces and I've been hacking away at it and play, having a good play. So I thought I'd come on and we'd start with a simple pocket and journal space that we can put into our journals. Now it could be a floating pocket or you can stick it in, do it in a number of different ways. So the kit was designed with mirror images next to each other so that if you cut them out like this you can fold down the middle line, glue them together, cut them out and hopefully when you turn them over you'll have the same design on both sides which gives you a lot of different uses. So heaps of fun to play around with. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. You can just fussy cut them out singularly and use them on cards and just embellish pages and that with them. So, so much you can do with this kit. So I'll be having a load of fun with it. But we are going to do the mirror image and double them over today. So let me grab my bone folder which was around here. There it is. Now you can just fold it like most people would, but I'm pretty bad at folding things on the line. So I will score it lightly. And then I will pinch the top where I want to fold it. and try to get it as neat as possible on that line. Now, the good thing with these designs is they have left a border. You can see a gray border around the outside. So I think the idea is not to be too fussy with your cutting. You don't want to cut right close to the design. Um, that way, if they're not exactly together, both sides, you've got a bit of leeway. So then what I do is just grab my glue. Now I can see through and see where the flower is, so I'm just going to add glue where the flower is. Going over just a little bit so I get that border area. close it up and I'll let that dry for a while before I cut it out. Now I have just printed these out on normal copy paper because once you double it over it's quite sturdy. So I'll let that dry for a while. So while that dries I will grab now we've got some beautiful blue journal cards here somewhere. We will like one of those for this project. And I'm also going to use some book page. So I have a vintage German book here. The page is still quite white in this, but that's the look I want for this project. So 
So I've just removed a few of the pages because I'll need them for some of my other projects as well. I think that's where they want to come out. So for this particular project, we'll just use a double page. You can have two single pages, that's fine as well. And I've just got my glue stick here. And I'm just going to stick these pages together. I won't be too fussy with the edges because I will probably rip the edge pieces off a bit. So I'll grab my ruler to do some ripping. Just makes the page a little bit smaller because they're quite large sort of pockets. You really should wait till your glue is dry, but for sake of time on my video, I'm not going to. And I double the pages just to make it a bit more sturdy. You could triple them if you wanted to make them even more sturdy. Whatever works for you. Now the bottom one, just thinking I might leave the bottom one long because what I will do with that is fold up the bottom just to reinforce where our pocket is, like that. And I'll glue that down. we might ink around our book page. What I also like to do is just, even though we've ripped along here, I do like a bit more of a rounded corner on the tops there. So I just use my four millimeter corner rounder for that. Will be rough, but we're looking for a bit of a rough look anyway. Just using vintage photo here. Okay, so what we'll do now is make a little pocket here. Just like that. And we'll stick just the two sides down. Now I've turned it over, so I've got the back there. I'm gonna grab my little journaling card. And I have found that my 10 millimeter corner rounder works really nicely to round the corner on these, which is great, because I hate cutting, cutting round things out. And I will ink around the outside of this. Now these are very white in that. You could spray with tea dye if you wanted to or something, but I quite like the contrast. Especially because my page is quite white as well. So 
So I'm going to stick that on the back as a bit of writing space. So this is what makes it a floating pocket. You'd need to have it floating, of course, so you could utilise the writing space on the back. Which means we'd probably either hinge it into our journals or just use a paper clip to attach it to a page. Now we also need to ink down the bottom here. Looks a bit better. And it should be dry enough now to cut out a fussy cut. So I might just take some of the bulk off with my big scissors first. So as I said, I'm not going in real close. We've got the um, grey border around the outside, so you can sort of follow that along. And then you can see on the other side that you're in that grey border as well. Because if you go too close, there's a good chance you will cut into the design on the other side because it's very hard to get it exact when you're folding. So I will continue cutting this out. Okay, so I fussy cut my hydrangea here. So that's the front and that's the back. As you can see, I have managed not to cut into the design at all. That's where they're great, how they've got the mirrored images next to each other and the line in the middle that you can fold and stick together. But as I said, you just don't want to go too close or your folding would have to be spot on for you to want to fussy cut right close. But otherwise, as long as you sort of go in the grey border area. Now, I just noticed it didn't quite go in the border there. I can see some white, so I'll just cut that out a bit. But you can check once you've sort of cut it out like this. You can go back again and just have a look and you can cut down further on um, some bits and pieces if you want to. So I love these huge ones just as they are. I think they are beautiful and they're quite sturdy. You could even use this as a journaling card and write on the flower on one side. So what I decided to do with these is just slip them into the pocket. I just think they're gorgeous. So make a little pocket put your flower in. You can journal on the back of the flower if you want. You could add some more journaling space there if you wanted. Or another picture or something. Or just decorate it, which we might afterwards. You can decorate down there. Didn't realise this page had blank spot there, but that's all right. And then you've got your journaling space on the back. So I will show you the ones that I made last night. I did a couple of variations. So... We've got the first one I made, which was this design, with another hydrangea and the journaling card on the back. And then I did one that you could stick in. So you could stick this in and leave it as a pocket at the back because it's blank on the back. And I stuck the journaling card under the flower on the front. And then I thought I'd do one with a side pocket. So again, I've left that as a floating pocket and we can add something down the bottom, a bit of embellishment if we want. So that's the basis um, of the pockets as I've made them so far. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. So they're the biggest flowers, I'm pretty sure, that you get in the kit. And then the sizes range downwards. And there's some different styles of flowers as well. But I just wanted today to work with these big ones. 
So I think what we'll do now is go ahead and embellish them a little more, but I wanted to show you just the basis first because you might like them. I mean, I love them just like this. You could do a whole lot, lot just like this and put them away and then when you go to put them in a journal, you can decide what you want to do with them afterwards. But I think they'd look beautiful also with a bit of sewing. So I think either some cream stitching or um, blue for the blue. I tend to do your colour-coded stuff. I'm terrible like that. So what I might do is head off to the sewing machine and do a bit of sewing and then come back and we might have a bit more of a play with them. So I have done my sewing just around the outside, light blue thread on this one. I've sewn the others, which I'll show you after we've finished this. So we want to do just a little bit of embellishing now. So what I did was raided my scrap fabric bin. Any excuse to get rid of some of my scrap fabrics. And this is not all my scrap fabrics. I've got them sorted into sort of shapes and sizes <laughs> in different containers. So these are my long strips. So I dragged that out and raided it for different colours. Found this blue one. So I want to stick that down there. So we'll do that first. So I'm just using a bit of fabric glue here. Just came out fabric glue. like to use it where I can for my fabric because it's very very cheap I think it was four dollars a bottle so it saves my other glues oh, I made this one a bit long that's all right now eh? bit crooked but it doesn't matter just make sure these edges are stuck down Good. And then I do have these two pieces. Now these are out of, I think it's the bits and pieces, set seven, watercolor, I've got it here. Watercolor bits and pieces, set seven. Um, from which craft do you do? I have managed to print and cut this much of it it's a huge kit absolutely love it um yeah <laughs> great for just playing around with so i thought we'd use some of that as well so what i'm going to do is put this down the bottom get all the different colors with it so it's great just to add the little embellishments on Little pieces here and there if you're stuck for just that little extra bit. So I've been madly printing bits and pieces, <laughs> which is what the kit's called. Yeah. I think I've been printing out the watercolour one and what was the other one? I've got it here. Bits and pieces set four too. Absolutely love that. So I'm madly printing that out too. That is a huge kit. My printer got halfway and then thought it had had enough and just stopped. So I have to figure out where I'm up to and print out the rest because I want to cut that all out and just have it sitting around because as I said, they're just beautiful coloured bits um, when you just need that little coloured piece to add to something. It will be awesome. And then I've got a little swatch card, which I reckon will just add something nice to the background. Put it where I put the other one, just there, I think. It's so such a nice colorful way to jazz up some old book page. Anything that gets me using the old book pages. And my scrap fabric. I can 
Let's slip a little hydrangea back in. And so that is it, quick and easy. And I love them. You can add heaps more if you want to, but I like to keep things simple. So that is my floating pocket with my little floral insert that you could also write on the back if you wanted to. Slips in there, turn it over. You've got some journaling space. So I'll show you the other ones that I've finished off. This one's pretty well the same. Just a lighter blue. It's got another swatch in there. That journaling space. See, they're beautiful. Just the different colours you can get out of that watercolour kit. So I'll link below a direct link to the Vintage Flower Collection Set 2, where all the flowers and the journal cards and that come from. And there'll also be a direct link to your watercolour bits and pieces, set seven as well, just in case you're interested. And then there's this one, where I've done the journaling card on the front so that I can stick this one to a page and make it a tuck spot behind if I want to. And I just sewed down both sides of that one. And then I've got this yellow rose. Just put a little green um, label down the bottom of that one. And then on the back, we've got the journaling card for that one. And I've just added some blank book page there. I might actually stamp on that or grab a little picture to put there. Might even stamp a little flower or something would look nice. I could also, um, what would another thing that would look really nice is to print out the smaller versions of these flowers and stick one of them on back with the journal card. That would look really cool as well. So, so that is it for my first project using that vintage flowers collection. Um, I will be on during the month with a couple more. I've got a few ideas of things that I'd like to try with them. Absolutely beautiful and heaps of fun to play around with. So take care of yourselves, be good, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.